Are you guys looking forward to CitizenCon? I know that I am. And this guy did a video that the community let me into that is basically every single CitizenCon in 10 minutes. Uh, I cannot wait to watch it. CitizenCon is a celebration. I have a great time with you guys. I'm going to try and reserve this month's CitizenCon on live stream the whole entire day with you guys. I will keep you posted. If I can swing that, that will be freaking fantastic. I did it two years ago. It was the best day I ever had. I still remember it every single day. It was a blast, and we just partied it up on the stream. So keep posted on that news. Let's watch and let's see every single that, Citizen Con in 10 minutes. Worth of Citizen Con footage into one That's awesome, Jam. That is what I've attempted to do here. Join me as we look through every year. We get the highlights, and we try and make it as short as possible. So let's go. First Citizen Con from Austin, 2013. And it's fair to say there wasn't much to show at this point. They were really just <laughs> no getting too. off the ground CRG. They hadn't got many staff. They really were at the very early stages of development. So we got some videos from the design team, the engineering, <coughs> the art team. They're showing some behind Most the scenes. Most of those people aren't even doing, working there concept anymore. Concept art here. But really, this was not as spectacular as any of the following Citizen Cons in any way. Then you got the Gladiator reveal, which was quite exciting back then. And then some here, a little <laughs> bit of video from their partners, their external partners who they're using for a lot of external art that they're getting in. The Retaliator then was revealed. Turbulent showed us a bit of the first look at organizations that came online in a few years time. And then we get into the, probably the biggest thing, Foundry 42, the Manchester studio coming on board with <coughs> Robert's brother, Erin, joining. Next, we have Don't get me hangar started talking about Aaron. Hangar at this point. The fish tank was a big highlight. Big cheer for that. That shows where we're at. And then the Avenger was in engine. And then the next great starship was revealed. I really miss Sandy. Off, we had a Hornet trailer. So that was it. It wasn't particularly spectacular. But at the time, it did feel spectacular because it was the first we had. So there we go. That was 2013. Next up, LA, 2014, and it's definitely a bigger and better system con. Production values have gone up. It looked less like it had been made in the 90s, but we had a nice <laughs> look at all the studios, a bit of talking from each one. Foundry 42 had showed us their progress on the Squadron 42, looking at the Shuban grey box here. And interestingly, the devs, when they were talking in their kind of talking headpieces, were all quite certain that Squadron 42 was coming in the next year or so, which obviously didn't quite happen. Look at Bartender there, some AI, <laughs> and then into Arena Commander. Chris talking about that. We then had a bit of a look at the Vandal, the first look at the model in the Cutlass trailer, which was very nice, and their trailers definitely got better. Very nice look there. The 890 jump was revealed with a nice brochure and some concept art. Oh my god, was the 890 jump long time until that long the ago? Then we got the Austin Studio talking us through what they've been working on. Yeah, Ben, racing, sorry, sorry, Grizz, just saw it. Yeah, Ben Lesnick. Looking at what they've been working on for the Persistent Universe at that time. Bit of look at the cities. Tony Zurek, bit of hand waving. Tony! And then we've also got some nice concept art here. But here's the main bit, the demo showing us going from space <laughs> down to the planet. But this isn't what we get now. This was a faked landing almost where they're kind of <laughs> loading us through the clouds and then you're down to the city. So it's all on rails. But this is a first look really at Area 18 or what it used to look like. Obviously, graphically, the game actually has improved quite a lot from this time. And Area 18 doesn't look like this Oh, today, man, I remember those days. cool first look at what was actually coming. You remember when and it, then here's their roadmap. For the you remember when Area 18 first came out and you could walk around like that away from your hangars, dude? That was like, that was pretty big. I remember that. I was I was around for feature, that. Which didn't quite pan out exactly like that, but <laughs> there we go. Manchester 2015 now, a lot of drama coming into this one, but we've got a good look at Alpha 2.0, or what would eventually become Alpha 2.0. 2.0. Looking at gameplay here, demo straight away, which was very nice at the time. Obviously, the game doesn't look quite like this, but this first look outside of Port Olasar, looking at Crusoe there, was pretty spectacular. And then some multi-crew gameplay, and this really does resemble the sort <laughs> yeah, of what gameplay is today. Comrades do exist still in the game, sort of like this. Then we had a nice look at some repair drones, which don't quite exist today. And then a look at security port Korea, which is still there and still quite a massive part of the game, really. Uh, a bit of FPS shooting to get us all excited. And then after that, then they finish the demo off with this kind of nice pan around all the destinations that you'll be able to visit when Alpha 2.0 comes online. Nice look at the star map, which is on the website. <laughs> this again is pretty cool, still still pretty cool, but just showing us the scale of the universe. A sort of awkward look at the 
uh, Hotas, which never came to be. You know, and then this all comes in stages of demos. Like that, that is the one thing that I've noticed about the progress of every single Citizen Con is that they are staging it as a demo to show you what they want to put in the game. Now, some of these systems are already designed. I had a Terra leak way back in 2015, 2016. I would think I was like one of the first to put the Terra leak out. I still get comments on it to it this day where <clears throat> they actually designed Terra and they have Terra pretty much complete. Now, I'm sure there's been a rework since. I'm sure with everything and all the new tech that they probably had to go back over it a few times. But just like we got that Terra information back in 2016, 20, somewhere around there, I can tell you that I'm pretty sure that they already have systems locked and loaded and ready to go because of squadron 42 and that that is all things that is not demo that those are that's actual work done in the background that they don't want to release because they want to have some surprise like they want to have some surprise for the people playing the game they don't want to put everything out there and be so transparent that when the game's basically coming out in terms of when i say the game i'm talking about squadron 42 not the official release of the pu but more so squadron 42 when that comes out we actually you know are are we don't know everything about it, and we actually are pleasantly surprised, even those who have been following for the longest time. So I actually appreciate that. I don't want to know every single – I actually do want to know every single thing. But, you know, it's kind of like spoiling uh, Christmas morning and figuring out what all your presents are before you open them Christmas morning, which I I have to admit I was one of those kids. I did f go and try and find the presents ahead of time and successfully did so on many – uh, black ops uh, operations, uh, you know, when I was a child and I figured out two of two, two Christmases, every single gift that I ever had. And it did spoil me a little bit and it wasn't as exciting. And so I stopped doing it. <laughs> and Bishop's speech from the Senate, which was nice, a kind of sneak peek of Squadron 42. And then all of the crazy <laughs> names and celebrities that they'd paid to do all the facial and motion capture stuff to be actors in the game. But then the all famous 2016 release date, which obviously didn't quite come. Then some behind the scenes of how they'd made this, very cool. Look at Gary Oldman stretching his face. And then just to look at the motion capture sessions and all the actors, lots of exciting famous people here. Again, this was a, probably the high point of hype for Squadron 42, I think, in my opinion. And then we finish off with the all famous Morrow tour, a look around the Idris in Squadron 42, talking to some of the characters, some nice canteen shots here, and then finishing off with a mission briefing. LA 2016, we start off with a look at Spectrum from Turbulent, which is very nice. It kind of looks like this today. This resembles what we have. Then the Polaris was revealed, and we then had a look at Squadron 42, looking at the tech hurdles and also a status update on what's going on, including 2.6. Was 2017 the Sandworm event? Which never really came to be, and we're still waiting for Surprised that that's not on there. Zero, including <laughs> V2 Planet Tech demo. Now, this was pretty spectacular looking at a first look at V2 and really they've done a really good job with this and, and it's obviously better now with v4 but we had a look down coming down on the planet then we had a nice ride yeah. as yeah here kind we of go. showed off the scale and a bit yep. of cinematic stuff here as well explosions fps shooting trying to show us the full picture of what playing star system will be and then a nice bit of uh, driving around on the dragonfly and then finally doing some nice takedowns and infiltrating this bit showing the scale there going back and then finishing off sad work and uh, very cool at the time. I don't think we'll be seeing this anywhere anytime soon. Then we had a look at behind the scenes, how they made this, looking at the planet tech, how they kind of paint the planet with all these different uh, elements. And then a quick look at uh, the sort of Squadron 42 and then a look at the Idris in engine. Looking back, it's probably the most controversial. What's up, Erad? I see you growing your stats. Let me tell you something. We're watching, by the way, Erad's here. I love, I love Erad. I did watch your video where you're playing Star Marine with Warp Drive, uh, Warp Space and uh, Anak. And uh, I have to commend you on your choice of the F-55, dude. So first off, let me just commend Erad, my friend here, of using the F-55 as a, as a weapon. I think that's probably one of the better weapons to use. And I was happy to see that you had that and you were rocking that out. I think that was the first thing I noticed. And it was very funny, dude. It was very funny. Did you notice we painted the stash in Argo color? It looks like I dipped my face into a bowl of spaghetti. Did you notice that, Erad? You, you missed the stash event where we painted it and I nearly died. Pepe had to save me. <clears throat> I, I still feel it in my lungs. So if I have times where like I'm just phasing out, just slap me, guys. You know, for everybody watching, just ask me if I'm okay from time to time. If I space out, I'm I'm very, very uh, high on this shit right now because it, it accidentally got inside me. And it does say warning fatal 
do not breathe in, do not put on face, uh, skin, uh, nose or mouth. And we broke all the rules and we're happy about that. We broke all the rules. Fuck you. Warning labels. No, no, that's terrible. What am I teaching the children? What am I teaching the children? <laughs> 0.0 slides. We're still waiting for those five years later. But let's keep going. <laughs> Next up, Frankfurt 2017, which felt like a full convention, really. We had a whole day's worth of Argo content, colors, buddy. different panels going on, showing all the things, how <laughs> walk over things, how the graphics tech is working, Jean, Jean language, looking at the planet, the moon, <laughs> and then also the consolidated Outland Pioneer and land claims, a bit controversial. Then we get into the demo, which is a look at Art Corp and Hurston, starting off on Art Corp, showing some, some of the- Jared AAT fluctuates. Stuff, and then flying above Very the much like me, I do the same thing. I fluctuate weight all the fucking look time. Amazing really how the planet can come on, and then seeing the scale of the whole planet and the fact that we've just been down there. No loading screens, pretty mind blowing at the time. Then there's a jump, to Hurston, but whilst that jump's going on to show that it's in real time, they show us some behind the scenes look at the city editors and the planet <laughs> tech they've been working on. Get some flow graphs, a look at the truck stops, how they're building that using procedural my son, stuff. My son uh, notified me, by the way, and, and the reason why I'm worried about children is because my son notified me that his friends watch me, and to those friends, I would say thank you. Uh, my son is embarrassed of me. I don't know why. Uh, no, he's not. He actually, he actually is is very happy that I'm doing what I'm doing. But I want to tell you guys something. I want to I get you guys in on something here. I wanted to do something special, uh, even more than the Argo colors. I wanted to paint my. Maybe we'll do this for another day. Maybe we should have another stash vote. Uh, like we should do that like every few months to see if we should keep the stash or shave it because I feel like that is a community thing. I do have red, white, and blue. I, I was going to go with like a very patriotic red, white, and blue, and I was going to do like a candy cane sort of. Now, I will definitely, now that I've, now that I'm accustomed to what this shit is and how this, this shit reacts, and I'm going to have to like pre-prep myself before the show. So what I want to do if we do save it again. Uh, maybe we'll have another vote. <laughs> maybe around December, maybe around November, December, we'll have another vote. And if we do save it, I do have some backup red, white, and blue paint. And I will pre-prep it so that I will paint like a candy uh, striped kind of red and white striped stash top with like a blue bottom. And then I will have like a fake eagle on my shoulder that I will mount to my shoulder. And then in the background on the green screen, we will have like a flag flying the colors of Murica. And I would just put my hand on my heart while the while the national anthem plays. And I think that is one of the things. Now, I told my kids about this. I said, hey, kids, what do you think about this? And they, they were mortified. They're like, Dad, that's too much like Trump. And I started to laugh. I'm like, why is everybody associating red, white, and blue with Trump? Like, I don't understand that shit. Can't I just be proud to be American without having to be, like, associated with Trump? And why do we have to put politics into this shit? You know, Democrat or Republican, you should be proud. And I want to be proud. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to be proud. You understand? I want to have that eagle on my shoulder. I want that flag to fly in the background. These kids today, these kids today are so worried about everything. They're so tuned in and jacked into social media and what Tom and Jacob and Sally and Sandy and all these people say and how many likes they get and all this shit. They can't remember how to have fun. Does anybody remember laughter? Pepe, you remember laughter? You want me to paint it the color of the Mexican flag? Oh, well, we could do that too, Pepe. We should get you on here, Pepe. And we should we should have like a stash competition. And I will have the America stash. And you will have the Mexican stash. And we can have a Mexican standoff. Is that is that not right to say? I can't say that. That's not right to say, Pepe? No? Okay, I, I apologize about that. All right. But what do you think about that? If we had like a stash competition, you like that? Okay, all right, well maybe we'll do that for the next one. And then we'll get you on here, put your stash up against my stash. We'll have kind of like of America, Mexico, America versus Mexico kind of stash thing, dude. All right, cool. And then just a look around that in game engine, as well as then a look at how they build out those cities. We then arrive at Hurston, go down to the planet, fly around a bit over to the city, Lawville. And again, it doesn't really look like this now, but it was a cool look at the city for the first time. Then a bit of a walk. Bit oh, of riding shit. on the knocks and then into the city and then finishing off with this nice kind of cinematic with some fauna, which 
Again, we don't quite have, but who knows, we might get that eventually. Next up, we're back in Austin for 2018, and you'll see a 3.3 demo. So this is actual game. Oh, you guys remember this? Into the game. Nice look at I think this is the one we, we celebrated all day long. Mission. So nice jumping around, cutting things, shooting things, jumping out of spaceships, and then going down to do a bunker mission. So it was quite a good demo. Uh, was it yeah, which one was the one we watched? Was it 20? I think I feel like it was 2017 was the one we watched. Taking it back to be dropped off. <laughs> I can't so remember what year we did it. Like it was real. And this is gameplay. Like where we streamed the, the whole thing. We then had panels in the middle of the day. Tony Zurich gave a nice good old look at economy. Then we have some look at the volumetric power stuff and then finish off the day with road to release. Looking at what is released, what are the things they actually need to do. Telemetry was there and then a final look at the Squadron 42 cinematic teaser, which was pretty spectacular. And you see how far they've come since the last look at some of these characters. It really was quite amazing. And that, that really was the end of 2018. We're in Manchester for 2019. Yeah, I'm really looking forward uh, to Quantum. Up, we have a demo that's split in half. So we're in the, in the Carrick and the Pisces, go down to New Babbage, and we're flying over the V4 Planet Tech stuff, which looks this is This is it. This is the one a I think we watched. And then you're off to do a mission. They then pause it there. <laughs> Jay's like, you guys better bring it. We've got sound, we've got law, we've got prisons, theaters. Of Listen, why do I always think that they're going to come uh, like like this one? This whole year I've been thinking they're going to introduce Pyro. I don't know why. I don't think that, like in my wildest dreams, I feel like Pyro is going to be like something they're just going to bring out and be like, ha-cha-cha-cha, look at this. We're going to surprise you with Pyro, you know? I just feel like, you know, like I, I, even though it's probably not probable, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I get it. It's it's not probably what we're going to see. But something tell like I just feel like there's something there. Like something like like much bigger like right around the corner. I, I feel like it's right I feel like this one's going to be a good one. I literally think the Citizen Con's going to surprise a lot of people and I I'm not quite sure how, but I feel like it's going to be like, "Oh man, this is a crazy crazy ass surprise." Of war, looking at the UI, looking at armor, also looking at concept for the Pisces, and then Tony's <clears> is a big <throat> thing on Quantum, which is very cool. Then we're looking at what's coming next: platform persistence. What I didn't like, like Jay, Jay saying, Jay saying, uh, Quanta is a pipe dream to distract us, but like. Uh, from what is explained with what Tony Z is going to do or wants to do, I really think that it will get there. I just think it's going to take a lot of time to get it to the point where they want it to get it to. I think right now, Quanta, they say, is in-game, but I personally don't feel like it is. I feel like everything's set on a timer. Um, I, I, I listen to Jack Axton quite often in terms of the trade because I stopped trading a while ago. Like, you know, it got fairly boring to me and I didn't feel like it was dynamic and I literally felt A to B fetch quest. I didn't feel like it goes anything. And why should it? Like, again, we're in beta right now, so it doesn't do anything, but it should still be enjoyable. There should, there should, this refresh fucking timer thing needs to kind of go. And like I said a long time ago, like about a month and a half ago, the way the economy becomes real is when these manufacturing nodes are for real and when real demand happens. Or alpha, alpha, sorry, not beta. Oh, shit. Okay, Erad, I, dude, I'm high on paint right now. You understand? <laughs> like, I'm trying my very best, Erad. Don't be so critical right now. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I know we're in the alpha. For fuck's sake, that's all we ever say. <laughs> anyway, don't no eradications on this show. Uh, I'm too loopy right now to handle any eradications right now. <laughs> Don't do that. One whole show was devoted to you. I had one highlight where we watched this dude that I like to watch. Uh, he's His name's Leafex. e comes on here and he just like fucking pulls him. You know, like, and, and I'm like, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to put some context to it. The whole the whole point of that was just to like relax and watch something and have fun. And Erad just comes in and is like, bah! and I'm like, the whole it was it was great. I did eat a pumpkin, by the way. If everybody's wondering, uh, uh, Razor, I did eat a pumpkin, and uh, you missed that. It was a, it was a fantastic morning. I think all these things come in the future that still we're waiting for. Back in the demo, we looked at dynamic weather. Then they kind of staged this stealing of this data for the server. <laughs> uh, and then we run outside, escaping all the things, get on a big suit. Not just my and then fans, looking at some of the dynamic weather, how that works, how it affects VFX as well with the snow, looking at the cloth on the rover, then going back into the Carrick. We then shoot some enemies. We then quantum travel away to a jump, 
ring and then the probably the most expected act bit we go for the jump point we have a look at this wormhole travel and then we end up in pyro which is a nice look at pyro and then really the demo <laughs> finishes and then we have a slide which shows us that pyro dynamic weather should come in Listen, 2020 Doesn't do i have to go back and reiterate everything and ruin this that i'm going to ship off to youtube to explain everything all over again it feels like i'm in some weird type of like uh <laughs> fucking repeat reality man oh my god <laughs> god just... waiting for that until 2022 and that I don't have the energy the of that well done if you've made it all the way to the end. Like the video if you like. Yeah, I mean, that was good. I, I, I'm glad that guy kind of went through that, but I felt like the presentation was a little boring. Like, that was good. I'm glad that we we got like, that whole 10-year e recap, and it was very informative, but I feel like he could have put a little twist on that. So who's that? Ten, what is that? 10 pound 42. 10 pound 42. A little bit more. Like, listen, maybe that's not his style. You know, who am I to judge? I'm nobody to judge. Look at me. I have a, I have an orange stash and an orange soul patch. Thank you, Jamma. Thank you for that resubscription, Bo. One of the things I have to say is this, though. Like, personally, for me, as, as, as somebody who's watching, you know, throw some levity in it. Throw some comedy in it, maybe. Just throw some a little bit of lightness in it. Throw some happy vibes. Throw some positivity in it. You know, like, this is very categorically like I'm reading an encyclopedia entry. You know, okay, cool. Maybe that's what it's for. Maybe it's just all informative and, you know, but I, I, I kind of want a little, you know, put a little panache on it. You know what I'm saying? Put a little panache. But overall, I'll give it a like. I'll give it a like. I mean, that was very throw. Te Listen, he did like a Nubifier thing. He did 10 years in 10 minutes. Thank you, Jamma. <laughs> Next time, it's going to be black. Yeah. I love him. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. We're going to talk about that lore. We're going to talk about that lore.